Welcome everybody to our science class. Today we will talk about strange relationships among different species. Symbiotic relationships. If your little cat or dog has ever had fleas, you're already familiar with the concept behind symbiosis. Today, I will tell you about the symbiotic relationships that occur throughout the natural world. You learn about three different kinds of symbiosis and the effects they have on the animals that enter into them. You'll also learn how symbiosis can help organisms survive and grow. And finally, we'll discover how symbiosis occurs even inside your body. The relation between two animals from different species living in the same ecosystem is called a symbiosis. And there are three types of symbiosis, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Finding food and staying safe isn't easy for all the species. Each day, animals struggle to survive in their own habitats. Look at the picture. See a clownfish and sea anemones. Clownfish are small, brightly colored fish found in coral reefs. They are frequently found in the tentacles of sea anemones. Sea anemones capture their prey by paralyzing them with a discharge. The clownfish are immune to this discharge, so they benefit by having a protected home territory. The sea anemone on the other side also benefits from the wastes of the clownfish. Nobody gets hurt. Do you know how we call this relationship? We call it a symbiotic mutualism. Now, we'll learn about another relationship. Have you ever seen somebody hitchhiking? Asking another for a ride somewhere? There are many examples in war ecosystems where our one species uses the other one as a bus to move from one place to another place. Ramorized fish, for example, suck in the body of some sharks who are excellent fast swimmers and get their free ride on their back. It also happens with some birds. When they're tired of flying, they enjoy the ride on the back of a big mammal. When you think about it, the ramorous fish or the bird benefit from the other species, but they are not harming each other. We call this relationship symbiotic commensalism. Let's see the last relationship. Have you ever seen a dog who is desperately scratching and scratching? I do it because they got meats or fleas on their bodies. These little species look inoffensive, but actually they are feeding on your dog's blood. Plus, they are using the poor dog's body as a place to live and reproduce. This harmful relationship is called parasitism. Because they are parasites living in or on the body of other species, let's say the host, absorbing food and minerals they need to live. Sometimes mitts and fleas can cause dogs to become sick because they are carriers of some dangerous sicknesses that might even kill a dog or a little puppy. So now you know that parasitism is a relationship in which one species gets a benefit while the other one is terribly harmed. Parasitism happens to us too, and it can be very dangerous for our health. Let's see how much we learned today with some questions. Question number one, what is symbiosis? It is the relationship between two animals from different species but living in the same ecosystem. This is called a symbiosis. Second question, 
How many symbiotic relationships can we find? We can find three symbiotic relationships. Mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Question number three. Give an example of a symbiotic mutualism. Clownfish and sea animals. Clownfish use the sea animals like protection from their predators, while the sea animals benefit from the clownfish's wastes and minerals. Question number four. Is one of the two species heard in a symbiotic commensalism? Absolutely no. One of the two species benefit from the other one, but without harming or affecting the other one. Remember the free rides and the hitchhiking? Question number five is our last one. What is a symbiotic parasitism? It is a relationship in which one species hurts the other one. A parasite usually lives on the body or on the body of the host. Okay guys, that was everything for today. See you on our next science class.